are there limits you wouldn't go for a loved one? I am Messi Bond and today's story centers around a newly appointed magistrate who disguised as a female to write an examination, a law examination for his girlfriend, Irene Motonye, on the 26th of July, 2023. Now, the story is quite um, interesting because this is a man who has attained that level of success and for love, he threw it all away. I didn't think men could go that, you know, that, that, that led to, who, who got to that length to prove love or to show love for their for their um, partners okay so I'm, I'm a little surprised not that I do not believe in love I'm a staunch believer in love but this this has taken me aback okay so now uh, Musa was caught while sitting for the examination okay at the Lira campus in Uganda and he was um, um, arrested and imprisoned and right now he's been stripped of that appointment it's been taken away from him okay which which and, and you know Jennifer Lopez's song uh, love don't cost a thing comes to mind and I'm wondering has love not really cost Musa Samuel Guerrero everything I can't imagine the sleepless nights you know all the times he stayed up to study, to take the examination, to get where he got to. And just like that, he's lost it all. For what? For love? Was it worth it? Couldn't he have advised her to study harder? Couldn't he have encouraged her, you know, to do it herself? Did he have to throw himself under the bus for her? Love is quite strong, I must say. But uh, I don't know. Would you? Would you? Would you commit a crime for a loved one? Let's know. Just tell us in the comment section. What would you do? How far would you go? Or what have you done? You know, for a loved one, have you done something that that um, I won't call it crazy? You know, I won't call it crazy. Yeah, it's crazy in a way. You know, considering the fact that this is um, a magistrate, right? Uh, a law, uh, uh, what would I say, upholder, if I would call him that, okay, and he goes ahead to commit this type of crime, okay, I'm just hoping, you know, he won't be derobed at the end of the day, because he's been sacked as it is, so I don't know if, if that would lead to he, his being derobed, I don't know how it works in Uganda, okay, this happens, you know, it happens, every, even in Nigeria, I remember when I was in school, you know, you they call them mercenaries. They come in to write examinations for people. They get paid for it. But you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's unimaginable that a magistrate would do that. Really, it's unimaginable. Okay, let's all try to be law-abiding citizens. Okay, irrespective of what pushes us, irrespective of the, of the cause. Okay, love is a beautiful thing. We should encourage each other on the on the right path of the law. Till I come your way next time, I remain my bond. You so how uh, how significant is it being seen that this deadline has passed, and uh, I guess a preemptive response from the junta and closing the airspace. It was very significant and everyone's waiting with bated breath to see what will happen, how ECOWAS will respond. Now, the defense chiefs of ECOWAS have coordinated a plan for possible military intervention, including where and when they will strike if the president, detained president, isn't reinstated. Now, will ECOWAS follow through with, with this threat that they issued a week ago? And how will the region respond? Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea have all made their stance extremely clear that they will intervene if ECOWAS intervenes uh, and they will respond with force. Algeria, which has one of the strongest uh, armies in, in West Africa, has said that they outrightly uh, reject any military intervention, that they are not, are not backing this, this kind of response. And I mean, it, it really goes to show how these coups have taken root 
across the Sahel region over the last three years. We've just seen a domino effect of coups. But I think it's important to, to point out that Bazoum was the first democratically elected president in many years, that actually Niger has a history of military coups and that this democratic uh, move was, was new. So we need to kind of see why people on the ground are supporting the junta. Now, there have been protests that uh, support, thousands of people have come out in support for the junta who've dug in their heels, who've not reinstated the president, uh, against imperialism, against ECOWAS, against former colonial power France, to say that they support the junta now. To understand that is to really see the disillusionment that civilians in Niger have towards cooperation with the West, cooperation with France, because it's not actually giving them a better way of life. And now, with the airspace closed, uh, regional airlines will have a lot of issues navigating what is one of the most central uh, airspaces in, in, in on the continent, but also with ECOWAS sanctions, there have been electricity cuts for up to 10 hours a day. Basic food uh, commodities have increased in price. So really on the ground, people are feeling the pinch and waiting to see how this will go. With Mali, and Burkina Faso having experienced counter coups in the past three years. The takeover of government by Mohamed Bazoum's presidential guards on the 26th of July has sent quite a shiver down the spines of West African leaders. I am Messi Bond. Over the weekend, at the emergency ECOWAS Extraordinary Summit held in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, Certain measures were adopted towards the move to force General Chiani, the, pres the presidential guard leader, to relinquish power and with immediate effect reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum as the democratically elected president of the Republic of Niger. Interesting. It's interesting how, how, how things have uh, unfolded, you know. And I, I am impressed by, by the enthusiasm with which the ECOWAS states, you know, are tackling this issue, you know. And, I'm, you know, I, I just wonder why such energy hasn't been expended towards um, checkmating and calling one another to order. Because I believe if, if such energy has been, you know, usefully utilized, West Africa and Africa by large, you know, wouldn't be on a constant downward slide in terms of development. Take Niger, for instance. One thought of, of, of um, one thought of the homes in France are being powered by uranium gotten from Niger. Yet, over 85% of Nigerians have no idea what electricity is. Is that fair? Isn't that a reason for coup d'etat? France and America have their military bases in Niger. Yet, all they do is take, take, take. Why haven't they given back to the people at least a little of what they are taking from them? Healthcare, for instance. Okay? Power. Why are they ranked the second poorest country in the world? Tell me that isn't a reason for a coup d'etat. The military have come out to say that the reason for the coup is worsening insecurity and poor governance. How much more can the people take? It saddens me really to know that Africa has so much, so much mineral resources yet we live in abject poverty. No African country should be poor. No African country should have kids out of school. No African country should have children who go to bed without food. No. But the, with the leaders we have, it's business as usual. 
they do not care. And even this move, this move, everyone, everyone um, applauds to be to be to be timely. Is get towards their 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 selfish needs. It is not for the people. African leaders are known to take decisions that favor them alone and not the citizens. Okay. And there is speculation that the, the this move was made because of the um, ECOWAS chairman, who happens to be the president of Nigeria, okay? And uh, there's speculation that he's trying to protect himself from, from you know, a similar occurrence in Nigeria because Nigeria shares a border with Niger. Okay, and if you have followed the news, you know that there's a court case, you know, in that regards, concerning the election and uh, who the right winner really is. So there's speculation that he's trying to protect himself, should same replicate itself in Nigeria. Okay. Now, Europeans are being evacuated from Niger. It's gotten that bad. International communities have condemned with strong words the actions of the presidential guards okay and ECOWAS is also standing with them and you know by precedence you know it's it's expected that when a NATO country goes into war with another country other NATO countries backs it up it's always been that way so in anticipation of that Mali and Burkina Faso have joined forces, or should I say, they have declared that they would join forces with Niger, with Niger to fight. Okay, any government, any government who who interferes, and the people are actually calling on the international community and asking them to stay away from their country. They want France gone. They want France gone. The people have been going about protesting and carrying um, the um, uh, Russian flag and asking Russia to step in and take over security of the country. So it's um, it, it's it's a dire situation right now because uh, even as I speak to you, Nigeria has closed its borders. Okay, closed its borders and cut electricity, um, cut off electricity to to Niger. I, 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 I really hope this doesn't escalate. I really hope it doesn't um, spiral out of control. Because I don't think the people are willing to back down. Okay, They have been given a one-week ultimatum by West African states. Let's see if that is honored. As we speak, President Mohamed Bazoum is still being held hostage Okay, by the guards. And the head of the guards has declared himself president of the Republic of Niger. Anyway, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it doesn't get worse than it is already. Okay? Because the French has sent troops into, into Niger right now. <laughs> I'm hopeful, really. I'm hopeful. Okay? Until I come your way next time, I remain messy bond.